and welcome to an episode of Fully Charged. This is really about charging fully. We've come here to the, we're, the Netherlands. We're actually in Eastern Netherlands at the moment, uh, Hengelo, we're just outside Hengelo. And we've been driving all over the place using these chargers. This is Fastned. We've featured them once before on the show, but they've really expanded and they're really breaking into new territory. We've come all the way to the Netherlands to find out more. <laughs> So Michael, uh, thank you very much for, for a start, for just having Fastened in existence, because it's, re it's really nice to use. I would love to know how, how well it's been adopted and used by the, the electric vehicle public in, in the Netherlands. They're, they're getting used much more every day. Right. Uh, so basically we're seeing an exponential growth curve. Currently good sites do 20, 30 visitors a day. Right. Uh, okay. But there's still sites that have a few visitors a day and it's rising. We've been here an hour. Yeah. But there's been three other people three other cars coming, coming and yeah. going. Yeah. Two yeah. taxi drivers and one civilian. Yeah. A civvy, someone in Civvy Street. But then the thing that I'm really impressed with, particularly with this car, is the 175 kilowatt chargers. And, and that's a relatively new installation. It's completely new. Right. Um, so the, the old standard was 50 kilowatt. Uh, yeah. Tesla came with a bit more than 100 kilowatt on supercharging. And yeah, I think what we see is that the, yeah, the old car makers, they want to trump that. They want to they wanna deliver something which is much better than that even. Uh, so they standardized on 175 for, for lower voltage range and even up to 350 kilowatt for the, the thousand voltage maximum. Right. Obviously, the reason why there's lots of trucks going past is because we're on a busy, we're, we're on busy, a busy motorway. Yeah. We're, we're on a busy motorway and that's yeah. where you want to charge as fast as possible. So. Yeah. One, 175 kilowatts around 30, 40 times faster than a home. That, that's what you need if, if, if your battery runs empty and you want to continue your journey. You want yeah. to really refill as quickly as yeah. possible. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what does that mean for, for a car like this? A range of 300 kilometers, half an hour break, and you can continue for another three hours yeah. of driving. Yeah. And in the future, then there's 350 kilowatts, which are the, yeah. the only, at the moment, the only one I know about is Porsche doing their, their the, the Taycan. The Taycan, but. yeah. Yeah, Porsche is aiming at it. The technology allows you to use this charger up to 175, and right. we see slowly the car manufacturers are adopting yeah, brand by brand, type by type, yeah. uh, a higher power level. So this one currently charges at around 80 kilowatt. We expect an uh, over the air update to go to 100 kilowatt. The recently released Audi e-tron will do up to 150 kilowatts. Yeah. Uh, the Hyundai Kona uh, should do around 70 kilowatt. But I think uh, I think if you look at that, like the difference between 70 kilowatt even compared to 50, it's a huge it's difference faster, for people. Yeah, it's, it's a huge yeah. difference. Yeah, we, we, we're starting to get quite blasé about these numbers, yeah. but they mean yeah. a lot. Yeah. yeah, they mean a lot. Yeah. Um, and, and I think what we see with people in our stations, people are recognizing this. So they use the faster charger if it makes sense for them. And I think that's, that's a great thing. Yeah. yeah. But then the other thing that you mentioned earlier, which I think is fascinating because there's been such a lot of uh, controversy about the Nissan Leaf, you know, multiple rapid charges in the Nissan Leaf. We've yeah. now experienced that firsthand. That you know, the first time you charge it, right yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. the first time you charge it, you get somewhere around yeah. sort of 48 yeah. kilowatts. But the second time, if you've been yeah. driving, it drops. But you, you told me that's not the only car that does that. No, I think in your experience, Nissan, Le the new Nissan Leaf definitely has has it in a sort of extreme way. Right. But I think if, if you look at it, it's yeah, the the first generation of cars, the, most of them didn't have very well cooled batteries. Yeah. Yeah. While the Jaguar has a cooling system, uh, the new Audi e-tron has a liquid cooling system in the batteries. Yeah. Tesla does it well. Um, yeah, the Nissan doesn't have it, and there are other cars that have that don't have a well cooled system either. For example, the e-Golf. So you see that behavior in there as well. Right. If you if you look at the the steps that the the electric car and the technology is making, is we're developing batteries that are that are cooled. We're developing cables that have liquid cooling in yeah. them. So the contactors are cooled, the cables are cooled to allow much higher amperages. Yeah. Uh, Porsche is looking at drivetrains, which are a much higher voltage. So you can combine higher amperages with higher voltage to attain even higher charge speeds. Oh, yeah. uh, people are working on batteries that can have higher C rates. Um, so all of that to, yeah, to go into a range of larger batteries cheaper battery, so a cheaper yeah. car, uh, and, and, and faster charging. And I think that in the end, these three elements, 
they they yeah they they're the part of the advent the driver behind the advent of the electric car. But one of the things we've seen is starting to develop in the UK is a rapid charge stations with bat with a, a, a battery buffer between the, the charger and the grid. Yeah. Is that something you've been looking at? Or? Well, well, currently the grid, the grid connections and all the power electronics are in the in, in that area there. Um, yeah, this station has a grid connection of half a megawatt, a megawatt or so. You can wow. upgrade it to maybe even two megawatts. I so see. That, that, right. that, that, in, in our European well-connected, high-quality grid, it's not necessarily a big issue in the beginning. Right. But let's assume that we have sort of the second generation of cars coming, even third generation, 200 kilowatt or even a bit more might become normal. Yeah. yeah, if you have a sort of a petrol station like setup with 20 of these chargers in a row yeah. and there's... And there's and 20 cars using yeah, them. And it's rush hour. Yeah. Well, well, then, then you're hitting a maximum yeah, you're hitting that max. You right. can't use that on the grid. Yeah. So I think what we're going to see is that there, at some point there's a fit of batteries on our station. That's right. also why we're piloting it. Let's talk architecture. I know, because it is <laughs> stunning, isn't it? Yeah. It, it's one thing to have a, a charging system which is fast and easy to use. And easy to use. But it's so just, easy to use. Yeah. It looks great. Now, who, who chose this style? Is this something that you guys? Because this is not the only style you guys do of. No, stations. this is a new style that we've uh, we've put up, and we'll be using this uh, across Europe from now on. Um, we have a we have a Spanish architect, uh, Maria Garcia, and she she designed this. Um, and Another. what we want we want basically stations to be extremely visible. Uh, yeah. Think about driving driving through a car park, having to find just that. That yeah, charge that's we've, we've, we've done we, it, we especially at night, it's an absolute pain. Um, so I want it to be visible, I want it to be recognisable, um, and what you can't see ain't there. Uh, and and if, you, if, you, if you drive along the motorway and you start to recognise that there are stations everywhere, yeah. Yeah. and you come towards a decision, am I going to buy an electric car or not? Hey, yeah. there's something in your mind that says, I had that network of chargers, it's yeah. there already. Yeah. yeah. So and a lot of people actually have said this yeah, to me. A lot of people have said, yeah. I don't see them, so therefore I don't know they're there. Yeah. Even if they are there. Yeah, and for, for us it's really important to tell people this is where you can charge. So really trying to use it as a landmark. Yeah. Yeah. And you you know, you've got solar up there. Now how much use is that solar right there? It's, yeah. a, it's a nice day today. I'm squinting. It's very sunny. Yeah, it's good. It's around two, three cars a day uh, for, for a larger produce, station right. that we produce in, 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 in yeah, the sort of the 30 kilowatt hour battery size. It's not really a huge amount of electricity that That's it generates. More than I it's but nice, it's, it's but nice. it's still it's, good. It's, a chunk. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's good. It helps us. Yeah. yeah. If we if we look on a good summer day, I think 20, 30, even forty percent of the current sort of usage of the network is generated by the by, by the, the solar canopy. I mean, by the canopy. Yeah. And it means that when Just the weather's the awful, canopy. yeah, you have got a bit of refuge. Finding the sites is critical. True. You're looking for sites all the time. True. Is true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not just uh, the Netherlands, obviously. Well, if you have an ambition to build a thousand stations across Europe and you have mm. a bit more than a, <laughs> yeah. a few hundred locations, yeah. you need to find another 700. So yeah. Yeah. I think that's our challenge. Um, and I can go through various channels. So there is governments that could provide locations like the Dutch uh, Ministry of Infrastructure did yeah. by uh, releasing a tender, allowing parties to subscribe to that. There's also opportunities with commercial landowners or local municipalities. Uh, think about inner city sites. There are a lot of cities that have a great, uh, large need for, for charging infrastructure yeah. for their taxis. Definitely. Uh, but we have teams in, in, in the UK now. We've got people in Belgium, people in the Netherlands, people in Germany, scanning sites and, and, and working through that pipeline to develop the sites. But I think that development pipeline, that's a lot, a lot of people are forgetting it. I think it's, it takes you up to a few years before you can build a site. Yeah. So looking at sort of where the car makers are going to, going to huge That's amount true. of electric yeah, cars yeah. in the 20, 2020, 2021, yeah. especially in countries like the Netherlands, Germany, UK, yeah. Belgium, we're going to need massive amounts of infrastructure. And um, 
Currently, people that buy a Tesla, they have a driveway. Well, if you if you buy a Tesla, you can also go, often you can afford a good a, a good living space. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if, if you live in a box, don't you? You bought a Tesla. <laughs> yeah, I just you, live in a very small. The trade off. You live in a wheelie bin. But in, <laughs> but imagine yourself like owning an apartment in in and living in a city. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you also wanna uh, you also wanna drive a Jag or yeah. or you wanna or drive a Nexus or a little car. Yeah, yeah. Or a little car. Yeah. Maybe uh, maybe uh, the next generation Golf. Yeah. And if you think if you couple that information yeah. with the coming of sort of sort of 200 kilowatt 150 kilowatt charging technology if you just once a week charge yeah. 15 20 minutes drink a cup of coffee yeah. go yeah. to the toilet you've got enough driving kilometers in your battery yeah. for a whole so week yeah. for, for a whole yeah. week yeah. this is this is when this makes so much sense yeah. when yeah. you have exactly. to rely on i mean we have home charge points but i understand if you if you haven't got that if, if you don't have home charging, like how are you gonna? You're not gonna be able to provide. You can, yeah, around 30, 40 percent of the people they have a driveway. Yeah. But 50, 60, 70 percent of oh, people. Oh, is, is that the, is that the percentage? Because in the UK, it's actually yeah. you're with 60 percent with a drive or with off street yeah. parking yeah. and 40 percent without yeah. in the UK. But I would imagine, I was gonna say. It's, it's I bet a bit it's the other way around here. Yeah. It's a okay. bit different here, but, yeah. it, but I think it, it doesn't really matter that much where it exactly is, but nobody even knows. Right. And we're gonna we're probably gonna see some solutions for people that mm. that do want to have maybe a charge pole in the street and they get a yeah. permit from the, yeah. but. In the end, if you look at, if you want to make it scalable, putting for every car a wall box at home is a huge challenge. Yeah. yeah. Even if you have a driveway. Yeah. yeah. And if you're talking about millions of them. If, yeah. if, if you buy a car, you can directly drive to a charge station. It just yeah. works. Yeah. 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 And I think that that's a basic infrastructure that's going to help us so much in the yeah. in the energy transition. If they're watching fully charged now and they're watching this and they think fast and it looks like a great setup and they've got a piece of land or maybe a suggestion, they can contact you to say, I would give like me, to give propose me a call. <laughs> that yeah. you could come and consider this site as a definitely, place. Definitely. And me being biased, I'd like something on the A1 <laughs> yeah. between my house and yeah. London. That yeah. should be, you know, yeah. really good for M40, me. M40, somewhere in a field on the M40. You know. Yeah, a one So you have to stop, go th open a gate, drive through the gate into a field. Anywhere, I'm happy. Definitely. <laughs> so, okay, so pe people watching this, if you actually have a site that you think could be considered for a UK Fastnet, connection not even UK there are other countries such as Holland <laughs> um, give give us a phone call we're yeah. happy uh, to to discuss right. I want stuff. to see I want to see one in, in Britain well no, well, now that will, I know we can come, we'll have to go to Sunderland it's a bit of a schlep for us but we'll get up there well yeah it's worth it just to have a plug in it is a Co yeah. couple of months we'll see we'll see some people starting to dig put street right. sound in place quick connections uh, we'll have a canopy uh, like this, Love but even much larger. Oh, even bigger than this uh, one. So oh. one site's going to have three of these. Wow. So it's going to be huge. In, uh, really? Yeah. I think it's a great thing that Newcastle, um, Sunderland, that they decided to do it. Because think about the difference, uh, the message that you bring to the world. If you put down a station, if you allow us to put down a station that's huge, yeah. that has up to six chargers, um, starts no, to look really serious. It, it yeah. starts to look serious. It brings like, a message. Like fuel station serious. Yeah. yeah. E mobility is the future, and we're and we're not we're not doing it small. We're we're providing scale. Yeah. Yeah. If, if I look at the team that we have uh, within Fastnet, we've got a great group of people looking at new sites. But after we've built them, we've also got a team that operationalizes that opera, it, yeah, yeah. maintains stations, looks after them, so looks cool. after our customers, and tries relentlessly to to focus on the uptime of the network, and on the other hand, removing bottlenecks in the user experience. Yeah. And and that's and that's what our customers see. We got we got very good reviews from them saying like this is just really easy thank yeah. you thank yeah. you for for taking another step to making it easier yeah, yeah. ccs uh, has a connection that also allows you to recognize what kind of vehicles is today uh, to, to, right. to take the vehicle id out yeah um using that we can we can just allow you to start charging automatically you don't need an app right. you don't need a card you right. don't need anything you just plug it in that's and start charging you know which car it is yeah. whose it is yeah, yeah. that's what i want and, yeah. and, so, and yeah. you just you, you can configure the network would you like would, would you like us to remember your car yes or yeah. no. that would be really good for like if you if you've got a car and you're sharing it with say your, your other yeah. half your partner yeah. then they can just plug it like in. I, I might have the apps downloaded yeah. Yeah, yeah. but my wife yeah. might not no. but yeah. she wants to just pull in quickly charge it that's when yeah. it starts to become so much easier when you can basically like, choose whether you want your wife to 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 pay by herself or that it's automatically configured well, i'm a very controlling person <laughs> yeah. so i think that's a great idea <laughs> i'm not no
So there you go, rapid charging, when you want it, nice and simple, good quality, fast net, fantastic. I mean, it, that's the thing we've really learned since we've been here is it's, it, it is about, you know, the ubiquity of chargers, that's important, yeah. but it's really, really about reliability. They've got an incredibly high rate of reliability. And that's the really big thing. When we drove here, we're just driven about 98 miles or something from Amsterdam. And what we found is I wasn't worried about it because I knew the charger was here and I knew it would work. That's, That's the thing, that, you want to get it? there the, and, and it know works. it works. So it's reliability, it's really, really, they've really cracked that. I don't know what their percentage is, but it's like 99.7% uptime. I mean, they yeah. just work, yeah. which is brilliant. It's not cheap. I mean, it's, it's, you know, you have to pay for it, but actually yeah. you'd only use this in, well, a couple of times a month maybe if you lived here and you were driving around all the time. Yeah. It's not a regular thing. But if you do long distances, it, you have to be able to know it works. Yeah, yeah. You're pulling it off the motorway, you just want to know it's peace of mind. Yeah, and they're so, also, you know, they're doing the 175 kilowatts, they're going to go up to 350 kilowatts. You know, they're future-proofing their system. So it's it's kind of a model that we would pray that other people will follow. Please, and, yes, yeah. please. Watch and learn. Watch and learn. Yeah. And thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to Fully Charged. Have a look at the Patreon link. There's a small bell icon on the screen somewhere. It's up I there. Don't... You press the little bell thing. It's, I think it's up there. What is it doing again? You, you, bell, you press the little bell. I don't know. <laughs> it rings when we make a new video. So... Yes, so you know we're kind of doing another episode. Yes. Which so we'll it... be doing lots of. Yeah, so if you have been... Thank you for watching.